In the last video, we discussed how basically replacing uh, an expression or a term in an, in an identity or in an expression, replacing a term with something equivalent. Like, for example, if I had uh, sine plus cosine, then I could choose if I wanted to, to replace the sine with one over cosecant because it's equivalent, right? We have, that's a known fact, it's a known identity. I could replace the cosine in that expression with one over secant because that's that's the relationship those two things have. There are other things I could replace sine and cosine with, but that's not the only way that you can manipulate uh, a left or right hand side. As I showed you at the end of the last video, for those of you who didn't watch to the end, I used a little bit of algebra and I annotated the, the steps that I used algebra. Um, I annotated those steps with the word algebra to indicate that that's really all I did. You're allowed to use algebraic concepts to manipulate your expression as well. So for example, if I have uh, an identity like, uh, let's see, well, I'll use the one in your textbook. In example eight, they have two times the cosine of theta, sorry, squared, cosine squared of theta, plus the cosine of theta plus, oh, no, it's minus, minus one. It's just an expression, it's not an identity. However, I can choose to rewrite this if I want to. I can just, off to the side, maybe let's say, let t equal cosine theta. If that's the case, then cosine squared of theta is just gonna be t squared. So I can rewrite this as two t squared plus t minus one. And now I have a quadratic equation, not a quadratic equation, a, a quadratic expression, right? Uh, it's not equal to anything, so it's not an equation. This will factor. Let's see, I have t and 2t to get t squared. I'm kind of unfoiling this, right? I have first 2t, 2t times t equals 2t squared. Um, I'm going to have inside, outside, and then I'll have last. These two terms multiplied by each other have to equal 1. So I know I'm going to have a 1 and a 1 at the end. Now, when I take my inside and my outside, I have 1t here, and I have 2t here. So these need to add up to 1t. That means I'm going to need to subtract either 2t from 1t or subtract 1t from 2t. Now, because I want this to be positive, I'm going to subtract the 1 from the two. That means I need to subtract this term or this product and add this product. I also note that since this is negative one, this last times last, those have to be a positive and a negative. Your textbook, when it did this, used x as a replacement for cosine, and that's fine. Uh, you could use k as a replacement for, for theta, for cosine theta. You could use k instead. You could use a or you could use y. I like t. t happens to be one of my favorite sort of dummy variables, replacement uh, variables. Um, I'll probably use t a lot. In context here, this t is not the same as the t that's an angle, okay? Because I'm specifically saying I'm going to let t replace cosine theta in order to do the rest of this work. The other thing that your textbook does uh, is says here is if this expression were written in the form of an equation set equal to zero, we could solve it, blah, blah, blah. We could, but it's not. So at this point, I'm not sure why they included that. We, we're going to have a, let's see, where is it? It's in section 7.5. We don't get to solve equations until section 7.5. So I'm not going to do that here. But what I do want to do uh, to finish this one out is to make the point that we made this substitution in order to be able to factor this. And now it's in factored form but it's not in the original variable. So I need to back substitute wherever I see a t, I need to replace it with cosine theta. So I'm gonna rewrite this now as two cosine theta minus one times cosine theta plus one. And now I've done this, this thing that the subsection claims using algebra to simplify trigonometric expressions. I have this expression in factored form. Now, it may seem obvious to some of you that this can be factored to this without taking these other steps. And if it is, that's fine. But remember to include, especially if you just go straight from here to here, the statement algebra to indicate that that's how you got from one step to the next. That annotation is critical to the reader, especially if we're doing proofs. This particular subsection is not we're not going to do any proofs here. We're just looking at other techniques that we can use when we are doing proofs. 
In fact, most of the time when we do proofs, as you saw if you watched the end of the last video, are a combination of replacing expressions with their identities and algebra. It's usually a combination of, the, combination of those two sort of approaches. This subsection really was just a formalization of the idea that you are allowed to use more than just identities, like replacing sine with 1 over cosecant. You're allowed to use more than that. You're allowed to use your previous skills, your, your algebra, and, and any other um, tricks that you might bring to the table, as long as they're legal, right? As long as they're, they're legitimate, legitimate mathematical uh, techniques. So that's it for this subsection and this section.